welcome back to the distressed princess I gave you your snack what else do you want Distressed Princess, I'm Rhonda. In today's episode, I have what I think are some really awesome ideas for the beach boutique home decor look. But first, today's fun fact about me. My fun fact today is my favorite beach. And although I haven't been to a whole lot of beaches in my life, the ones I have been to, my very favorite one has been Pensacola Beach, Florida and it has the sugariest white sand and the clearest, prettiest blue water I've seen yet. So in the comments below, make me jealous, tell me all about your trips to Hawaii and the different beaches that you've been to and which one is your favorite. Now on with the DIYs. I'm starting off today with the DIY I am most excited to show you. It is something that I've wanted to do for many years and it starts with this glass cutting board that you get at the Dollar Tree. And then you will also need some of the coasters that you can get from the Dollar Tree. Of course, you can use whatever kind of glass or ceramic that you like. We're gonna make a mosaic. And I just thought that these would be the perfect thing to work with if you're a first time mosaic maker and you'll need some caulk which you can get at the dollar tree in a squeeze tube and if i would have had some of that that's probably what i would have went with but i didn't so i just went out to our shed to see what we had and i had to use the caulk gun then i covered the coaster with an old 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 dish rag and i started hammering away to break off some pieces and please be careful anytime that you're breaking glass or breaking ceramic, any kind of activity like this, please wear some safety glasses so that nothing flies up in your eye. And also, I really should be wearing gloves. This is not sharp material at all. I didn't feel like my hands were going to get cut, but for extra protection, please wear some gloves. Now these coasters have a cork backing, so as you are breaking off your pieces, you can peel them away from the cork backing. Now this is my first mosaic, and I really was flying by the seat of my pants, but I decided that the center piece of that coaster, the, the very central part that kind of looks like coral to me, uh, that's what drew me to it, what made me think that it looked kind of beachy. So I'm going to make that my center part for my mosaic. And even though it's broken into pieces, I want the design to stay intact. So first I just laid everything out how I thought it looked best on the cutting board. And then I started hot gluing each piece down, but I don't really recommend the hot glue. Hot glue and glass has never worked well for me. I should have known this by now. I guess I was thinking because this uh, ceramic tile or coaster, it might adhere better, but no, it really didn't. Try to use something more heavy duty, some E6000, something along those lines. And here's where the caulk comes into play. You're going to use it like you would grout tile. Matter of fact, I guess you probably could use grout. I've never used actual grout before in any DIY project, so I'm not sure how well that plays with materials or anything, but I know that this caulk worked just fine. So as you can see, I'm just filling in those uh, cracks and spaces in between all of the pieces, and you want it way overloaded. You want those cracks and gaps completely filled to the brim. Then I just used my hands or my fingers to smear everything out in place and try to make it smooth. Then I used a spackling scraper to scrape off all the excess on the top. I let that dry overnight. Then I came back with a wet, dirty old dish rag <laughs> and you can pretty easily wipe the caulk off of the top of those pieces so that the design shows back through but if you have any trouble you can use one of these little scrapers that you can get at the dollar tree or any other kind of 
flat edge tool to help you scrape up the excess caulk. I loved it. I loved it already. It totally looks like something that would be in a beach boutique, in my opinion, but it needs finished around the edges. So I'm going to use some of this nautical rope that you get at the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to hot glue it all the way around the edge. And here's the final result. It can be used just to sit out for pretty, it can hold keys, or it could even be a plant stand. In the next one, I'm going to make use of these palm tree leaves from the Dollar Tree. I have two of them, and the first thing on my agenda is to paint them up some beachy colors, which I had every color blue except what I had in my mind, so of course I had to mix my paints to get the colors I wanted, but use whatever beach colors make you happy. I painted one leaf a darker blue color, and the other leaf a very lighter blue color. And I also tried to not ju just be one flat monotone shade on each leaf. I tried to add in some different shades of the main shade that I was working with so that it made it more interesting and not just one flat color. And the idea here is to attach those leaves to this 11 by 14 canvas that you get at the Dollar Tree. And even though the canvas is already white, sometimes there's some little black spots where it's rubbed up against something in production. I don't know, maybe at the factory, at the canvas making factory. But I always think it's nicer to go ahead and do a white coat of paint over your canvas. Then I needed to decide if I was gonna keep the stems or cut the stems off, and I decided to cut them. I left a little piece of it, but I cut them. Then I played around with the arrangement of the leaves on the canvas, which I actually wound up going ahead and gluing them down. But at some point I noticed that the back of my project didn't look very nice. It had paint on the back and so I needed to finish it with something nicer, which I would recommend doing before you glue anything down to the front. So I'm gonna show you how I finished the back next. This time I'm using one of the placemats from the Dollar Tree to finish the back and make it look nice. And I just hot glued it all around the edges and trimmed off the excess with my utility knife. Okay, so here's really the reason why I noticed that the back needed refinishing because I went to attach one of these purse handles to the back and use it like a hanger. By the way, I got this purse at a thrift store for like a quarter check your goodwills and your thrift stores because these are abundant and don't overlook purses to use just for their parts but anyway um back to the <laughs> back to the diy story you also will want to do the attaching of the handle before you glue anything to the front i did not think this through completely so mine's all backwards but anyhow i'm using this purse handle <laughs> to attach to the back so here we are with the back all fixed up and I'm going to use E6000 to attach that purse handle to the top of the back. And I thought it'd be best to weigh these down with something heavier. And here's the actual last step of the project and it is to hot glue your leaves down. And here is my finished project. As an afterthought, as I'm looking at this now, I am thinking that it would also look really pretty if you're able to paint some sort of simple leaf design, maybe smaller ones onto the canvas that would be behind these large leaves. I think that would be really pretty too.
My channel has finally just qualified for something called Super Thanks. And that is where you can send a one-time animation on one of my videos. And you can get a highlighted comment that I will pin at the top of my comment section and make you stand out in my comments. Plus, at the end of every one of my videos, I'll give a big shout out to all my super fans. You can find the super thanks button down below just under the title of my video and once you click on that, it will take you to where you can donate any of these amounts to support my channel. And I will use any donations that you send to buy more craft supplies to bring you more great videos. This next DIY is like one of those beautiful handcrafted things that you would find in the beach boutique on the boardwalk and it starts with this little ceramic treasure that you can get at the Dollar Tree. They have square ones and they have round ones and they will stand up. I had trouble peeling the tag off the back of this one. It wanted to take that black backing off with it so I just had to touch that up with a little black paint. And then I painted the whole inside part of that little dish and I didn't worry about the back. It took two coats of acrylic paint to get good coverage. Next, you'll need some E6000, and if you have it with the precision tip, that's going to be helpful. And you will need four seashells like this. It's going to construct a little makeshift seashell flower. And for the center of the flower, I'm using a piece from Totally Dazzled. But you could use any kind of junk jewelry you find at the Goodwill or thrift store. And if it has a pearl, extra bonus. You'll need to glue down every one of the seashells. And if there's a pin on the back of your jewelry and it bothers you, you can always use wire cutters to take them off. Then use the E6000 to glue that to the seashells. This one's runner up for my favorite. I don't know, it's neck and neck. I like the mosaic one a lot too. And this one is inspired by a picture I found when I googled beach decor and I thought this looked beautiful so I wanted to try to recreate it. So I bought this two pack of wreath rings at the Dollar Tree but I'll only be using one and some of this canvas type ribbon, uh, no burlap canvas, I don't know, white ribbon that was sort of the same stuff from Michaels. To give me something to attach my ribbon petals to, I'm cutting out a piece of cardboard that is the size of the wreath. Your cardboard should actually fit inside of the wreath. Then hot glue that cardboard to the wreath. Then cut a whole bunch of that ribbon with some little pointy ends like the ends of flower petals. and begin hot gluing them all down, starting with the outer edge and working your way inward. Then you'll need some rope to coil up and use for the center of your flower wreath and you'll use hot glue to make that little coiled up piece. And I think I forgot to say it before, but if your cardboard has a printed side like mine does, make sure that's facing up. That's the part that you're covering with all of your ribbons. And so your back part will just be the brown cardboard. And when I come to the end of my rope, <laughs> this is hilarious. When I come to the end of my rope, I like to tuck my tail in <laughs> and singe off my hairs. <laughs> now this part is up to you. It's time to add the starfish. You can leave it white or you can paint it like my inspiration picture, which is what I'm going to do. And then hot glue it to the center. Then 
then I decided that my petals needed more texture, so I began playing around with them and bending and folding them because this is wired ribbon. So I suggest buying wired ribbon and then you can play around with it and make it just as messy as you want it to look or it can be more straight lace like I had at the start. And the next morning when I looked at it again, I wanted that starfish to match the rest of my DIYs. So I added a little bit more coordinating paint. Thanks for watching everyone. I appreciate you all so much and for spending time with me each week. If you'd like to see more beach boutique decor, then click on the link that I've provided for you right here and I'll see you next time. Bye!